gun violence in America, a topic we seem to be talking about constantly because it's happening constantly and nothing ever seems to change, no matter how mad we get or how much we march or how many American lives are lost. Why is this issue so intractable? There's actually a ton of reasons, many of them cultural, like our love for the Second Amendment or our preference of freedom above all. But did you know about one of the lesser known reasons why gun violence is still a thing in this country? It has to do with this guy. This is Jay Dickey. He was a Republican member of the United States House of Representatives in Arkansas from 1993 to 2001. If you don't recognize him, that's totally fine. I didn't know about him either until recently. So why does this guy matter? During his time in office, Dickey described himself as the point man for the National Rifle Association. Yep, that's the NRA. Arguably, his most major move in office was to accuse the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, aka the CDC, of promoting gun control because they were funding research into the causes of firearm deaths. This accusation took place during a congressional hearing in 1996, and stick with me here, resulted in Dickey and his Republican associates slashing the CDC's budget by exactly the amount of that firearm death study, $2.6 million. More importantly, however, was that Dickey got some language included in the 1996 federal spending bill. Specifically, he added that none of the funds made available for injury prevention and control at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention may be used to advocate or promote gun control. Let's unpack that, shall we? What this language says is that the CDC, one of America's most researchy research arms, filled with some of the best and brightest researchers who are dedicated to helping Americans stay safe, isn't allowed to research anything that might result in gun control. Wait, but how does doing basic research translate into the gun control policies so many Americans are worried about? What we do know is that most times researchers have looked into firearm violence. What they found is that if there were fewer guns or if that gun access were restricted, gun-related violence would also diminish. And that means that often the conclusions researchers are likely to make about how to minimize firearm-related violence, well, it equals some form of gun control. So while the Dickey Amendment isn't an explicit ban on firearm research, it has resulted in a de facto ban. The CDC hasn't given any serious funding to firearm research projects since 1996, and it's even more far-reaching since the National Institutes of Health has followed suit. So to summarize, we haven't had any real research into firearm violence in America since 1996. That's the year the Macarena was the top hit song. Now, let's contrast that with how much firearm violence Americans have experienced. Between 1997 and 2018, a total of over 620,000 deaths have been attributed to firearms in the United States. Just this year, the Gun Violence Archive has counted a total of 53,786 gun violence incidents, including 13,779 deaths and 26,631 injuries. And since I wrote that down and spoke it to y'all in this video, those numbers have definitely gone up. That's a lot of injuries and deaths. The frustrating thing about firearm violence is that we know it is preventable if we could only actually do the things that we needed to do to stop it. But in order to prevent the senseless violence, we need to research exactly how best to do that. And that's where the Dickey Amendment really comes in to bite us in the communal ass. Why should we focus on research? There's still so much we don't know or need more information about. Why do some people turn to firearm violence while others don't? What are the warning signs of someone who might go on a gun rampage? And most importantly, what are the best ways to stop it and save lives? Without research, we're flying blind. Why do we need to repeal the Dickey Amendment? Or rather, why can't we just fund this research ourselves? I have two responses to this. First off, research is expensive. I'm talking millions of dollars here to fund large-scale longitudinal studies that can actually tell us what we need to know in enough detail for it to be useful and actionable. 
But more broadly, we currently operate under capitalism. Money talks and the silence our government is currently putting out when it comes to funding firearm research is deafening.